Okay, Fessy, obviously a disappointing loss to Utah, but let's accentuate some of the good that you saw in this game. What did you like? Okay, so this first, uh, first play up here, we are running a basic smash concept. What smash is, uh, universal ter it's a universal term for a corner route and a hitch. Uh, what you have here, because we are in a what we call a stack alignment um, and we're not out wide, it doesn't make sense to run a hitch from here, and so we end up running kind of a speed out right here. So we're going to have a corner right here um, by... Uh, by Dax and then out by Micah. One of the reasons you know we like to get in stack and, and other teams is it, it forces defenses to, to make to, to change calls um, and to maybe zone it up or, or if, if they're in man and we get in a stack they might change to a zone and it creates a little bit of space. So you'll see right here um, this corner right here he's responsible for this deep third of the field and he has to carry and respect this corner and so what it does now is it forces this flat defender to have to work all the way out um, to this out round. So that's just a, a way to generate cheap yards here. Um, we could have gone to either side and you can look right here even into the boundary. Matt is there as well. Uh, if these, if these uh, flat defenders play low, uh, we can obviously hit the corner out here. So just a good, good route here. We ended up taking a, a three, four yard pass that ended up getting us about eight, nine yards. And so the more of those we can get, um, you know, the more we'll keep looking for. And Zach Wilson seems to be looking at both uh, both Milne and Simon right there just to see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Pre-snap, he kind of looks at numbers and leverage. And so I think the fact that we're in the boundary here and there's a lot more bodies, he probably feels a lot more comfortable with the space that's out here, kind of two over two, knowing that these guys, this, these guys are going to go deep. So um, pretty good job here and uh, wish, wish we could keep, keep getting more of those. Okay, a run by Tyson Williams, which was uh, the longest run by a running back in the game. Okay, I did not know that, but um, as I think of it, it makes sense. So what we have here, we're motioning into a kind of a cluster set here is what we call it. And, uh, you know, this is a run pass option a lot of teams like to do. And, and a lot of spread teams are trying to equate numbers, you know, and they're trying to find where they have mismatches. Over here, we have three over three. And so we like the idea of giving the runoff just because our, our uh, bullet screen out here um, isn't favorable because they have the same amount of guys as us. And one of these guys is going to be unblocked here to make the tackle, which is what makes the decision to, to kind of give the ball here. Um, and, you know, thankfully we had a, a nice explosive run here on one of our outside runs. Um, if one of these guys were to, uh, you know, if they were to go to zone coverage and one of these guys were to bump in a little bit, Zach would then make the read and make the decision that it's uh, two over three out there and we're going we're gonna to take the bullet screen. So this, these are good plays that a lot of teams like to do. Like I said, they're just trying to equate numbers and find pre-snap that, okay, already we have the advantage, but we're now obviously it comes down to execution. So And that's 100% Zach Wilson's choice in that moment? 100% his choice, okay. yep. And James Empey, a nice, uh, nice pull, yeah. looks like. Yep, pull around, yep, space. he's cleaning up. You can see right here if we just, you know, they're, they're, uh, this D tackle right here bounces off just a little bit. If we're able to sustain that block just a little bit longer, you can see right there, you take this guy out of the picture, um, should be a house call right there. So. Okay, Matt Bushman had six uh, catches, 62 yards, had a 17-yarder right here. Yep, this is one of them. And this is another example of a quick, uh, quick route here that ends up going for a lot, lot of yards. Like you said, it's a three-yard, three, four-yard catch that ends up going for 17. So you can see one thing, um, this is just one little uh, uh, motion here we like to add. That's just window dressing. But what it does is as we sprint uh, Lopini, in this case, right out to the field, Zach is looking at his peripheral to see who is going to run with him. If someone completely sprints out and runs with him, um, we're going to be able to hit Matt right here uh, on the, what we call a, it's just a basic hitch route. But we're reading this defender right here. If he stays over Matt, then we're going to hit Beanie. We know Beanie's going to be out there with some green grass to run. If he runs out with the out like he does right now, we're just going to hit Matt on this quick little hitch. So one of the other things we have is these guys could really favor over here. And so we got to get another concept down here. We're getting Mike on a slant and Tyson on a flat. So if we start to feel a little bit overloaded to the field, bodies are a little bit tight, that will tell Zach that he's going to now go to this side. So Zach has freedom where he wants to go. Once he makes that decision, which is to the field here, he's just got to read who this kind of uh, flat defender is right here. So because he runs out with Lopini, we hit Matt on an easy hitch. And then anything else right there is, is a plus. All we wanted right here is five yards that was and so anything else was a bonus you can see he does a great job at um, missing tackles and getting getting some more yards there so how much is happening in terms of the decision that will be made pre-snap versus snap um, so pre-snap all he's looking at is is um, leverage and numbers so right now he says according to leverage with this guy being inside 
knowing that we're going to be Le he's going to be outflanked leverage meaning inside or outside exactly okay. yep leverage so he's out leveraged right now knowing that as lopini goes out this guy is going to be out leveraged so off of leverage he likes the side and off of numbers and then post snap really the only thing he's looking for is confirmation and if there's no drastic shift by the defense he's going to stay to that side if he feels a drastic shift and guys just really bailing out there that will quickly last second take his eyes to the weak side and he knows he'll have numbers over here so. it's amazing how quick the ball gets yes. out but he's looked at numbers and leverage exactly before. interesting yep. okay and then uh dax milne with a nice uh, catch over the middle yep so this is um uh, what we just call a basic seam route. And these guys have to read um, a lot of seam routes on the inside. Uh, we have what we call a middle of the field open look and a middle of the field close. So middle of the field open is you typically when you have two high safeties. And the reason we teach these guys that is that's, that's where the soft, um, uh, where the soft coverage is. And so if the middle of the field is closed, usually your seams is where you want to attack. When the middle of the field is open, you usually want to attack deep in the middle of the field. And so what Zach sees right here right now, these guys are on the same page. He realizes, okay, the middle of the field is open. We just have a concept where these guys are running goes. And all he's going to do now is read this safety. And he realizes if this safety overplays the go, then I've got Dax right here on this, on this seam right here that's going to bend inside. If this guy stays flat and really hangs tight here and is going to take away that seam, we're going to end up throwing the go route because this guy has no uh, safety help over the top. So all we're doing is we're really just picking on one high safety right here, or on this uh, field safety right here. So Dax does a great job at bending this route in, snapping his eyes around. Zach delivers a, a beautiful throw right on time, and it's, it's, it's a great look. It's hard to defend. He had a nice pocket, it seemed like, as well to throw in. Yeah, absolutely. Great protection right here. Pini gets a little bit of help here on, on an eye. Wanted to make it a point to kind of chip him any chance we had, and that's a good job. Zach feels zero pressure at all, and that's what makes him step in and just rip it. What will be a key for your group, the receivers, against Tennessee this Saturday for victory? Um, really just playing with just complete tenacity and, and every single play, any chance they have, if it's a run, um, to make those DBs feel them, you know, to just – to be a net and to be all over them every single game and then in the passing game just to win those matchups you know win with technique um, and really be able to understand the concept we're running and and the coverage and what's going to happen and, and being one step ahead and I, I you know just off of studying them so far I really really feel confident in the game plan that's going on so excited to go to Rocky Top that's one of the iconic places in college oh, man, football I'm so excited I've never been closest thing I had is, is a missionary companion who actually was the biggest Tennessee fan you could think of. He had a Tennessee Vols flag in our room, and Rocky <laughs> Top was actually his alarm clock. So I, uh, That's I, awesome. Yeah, I don't, I, there's a distaste in my mouth because of that. But, no, we're excited <laughs> just to play in, you know, one of the largest, most iconic stadiums in the country. It's going to be an awesome environment. I think the guys are going to have a lot of fun. Well, thanks for your insight. I really yep. appreciate it. No problem. Thank you.